Dozens of giant weta have been set free on Motuhi Island in Auckland's Hauraki Gulf as part of efforts to bolster numbers of these rare and threatened creatures. A breeding and conservation program involving Auckland Zoo, DOC and local iwi has seen about 5,000 of the prehistoric-looking insects returned to the pest-free islands since 2012. Auckland Zoo's Ectotherms team leader Don McFarlane says 70 adult size wetapanga were let go on Motuhi Island a few days ago, and the colossal plant munchers play a vital role in keeping the forest healthy. In terms of specialness, um, they're certainly endemic to New Zealand, found nowhere else on the planet. Um, the Department of Conserv- uh, Conservation can, uh, considers them um, nowhere near doing as well as they should. Um, so they've been listed as a species that needs um, action and help by the Department of Conservation. Giant because um, they're in the Guinness Book of Records, actually, for one of the world's largest um, insects. There are very few that are above them in weight, maybe a few tropical beetles, but these guys are in the record books at being at 70 grams, which is getting on for the size of a saddleback or takahe bird, which is one of their main predators. So as an adult, there aren't many that can take them on. What was it like to let them all go? Um, well, if you're a conservationist like me, um, then it's a realisation of a, of a dream. This is the sort of stuff I envisage getting involved in as a kid, so it's um, very personal for me. But um, for the species, it's, it's just another... Um, Another sort of suite of reassurance, if you like. We've done this uh, many times across uh, many islands in the Haraki Gulf, and the more we can do it, the safer they're likely to be. So um, we want to continue doing this until we see that these islands that we've released the uh, Wetapunga on, um, at least 10 years after the last time we do it, uh, when we return, we still see them there, then we can consider them established. How difficult are they to breed? Um, very difficult to compare uh, with any other species. I've worked with snails from Tahiti and field crickets from the UK. Um, I'd say that um, actually the actual breeding, the moment itself, if you like, is actually you can fairly much well, you can rely upon. They're, they're, they're not too difficult to get together to do the act, if you like. But then rearing the young, that's when the commitment comes in and the resources um, because um, they can produce many, many hundreds uh, of, of nymphs or babies, each female. And we collect six from the founder island, if you like, Hauturu. Um, so we can have um, in our wetter breeding uh, room um, over 2,000 individuals. But to get them to six months, say, um, 2,000 hungry mouths um, across the line so that they're ready and, and strong for a release is a huge commitment. So we're talking three days a week, eight hours each day, and we have a specialist browse team which collects all the food they need. So it's quite a commitment. And how important are they to the ecosystem? You know, you're putting them back on these islands and you're wanting yes. to re-establish them. What is their role? Yeah, well, it's um, safe to assume they were there before humans arrived, so they belong there. So that's a, a good response to that. This is something that was missing for around 180, 200 years. So it's probably a safe bait to bet to put them back. Um, they've been called forest regenerators. They've been called the mouse of New Zealand. Um, they are, um, like many other wetter species in New Zealand, they, they belong in the forests. They uh, return nutrients to the soil through their gigantic poos. I think one of the largest poos for any insect. When they hit the ground from the trees, I can tell you, you can hear it. Um, certainly in our room with 2,000 wetter, you can hear them all almost pooing in synchrony. So Seriously, you know, Don, I'm sorry to pause on this, but it was in um, bold and italics in the press release. Seriously, can you hear it raining poo when the wetters <laughs> are going? Honestly, when you go in our wetter port to come at night, when they all come out and you've got uh, 2,000 hungry mouths chewing, digesting and pooing, I can promise you you can hear amongst the cacophony poo hitting the deck, yes. But that's the good <laughs> stuff, isn't it? That's what you're it saying. Is. Exactly right. That's it. That, that's their contribution to the nutrient cycle uh, on the forest floor. So that was missing before. So a forest is only healthier with the addition of wetapunga. They're quite creepy, though, aren't they, Don? Oh, well, the, the, the standard stock response is uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, <laughs> You can learn to love anything, right? Um, and I think that comes along with an appreciation of um, uh, all manner of things to do with Wetapunga's life history, how they how they use the forest, how they move, how they breed. Um, it's just their whole life cycle is fascinating, and with fascination comes appreciation. Um, uh, the more you know about an animal, the, you know, the appreciation comes. Um, I think they, they have a certain beauty in my eyes. 
Once you once you drop them off on the island, yeah. do you do anything to keep an eye on them or um, measure numbers and see how they're going? Absolutely, that's um, a, a crucial element to any. Um, breeding program how are they doing you don't just walk away after the last uh, release so we go back uh, to the islands on which we release uh, these wetapanga and we engage several tools which help us basically track their development um, and, and that is actually a long-term commitment because it's the, uh, the visits are based around the life history of the weta. We release weta at a certain age and we return to the islands when we know they have definitely lived out their lives, died, laid their eggs, and we're expecting to see um, young. Um, and when we go out, we are basically doing spot searches with uh, torches. And we're also starting to use other devices like tracking tunnels, which uh, I'm sure you're familiar with. They're a, a kind of a, a, a plastic tube with an uh, ink card in the middle, and anything that walks across it, attracted in by bait, leaves a footprints, which are very recognisably wet upon them. And we're also trialling these um, uh, brand new Critipic units, um, which are also baited. They're a black box. Uh, wetter are encouraged into them, and a photo is taken. It's uploaded to the cloud so we can remotely see what's visiting uh, those Critipics and get an idea of um, whether they're there, what stage they are, and hopefully numbers. And that's Don McFarlane from Auckland Zoo.